It was a crime that shook the country to its core and helped accelerate the march towards equality for the LGBT community. 21-year-old Matthew Shepard was beaten to death and left to die on a fence in Wyoming by two men. And now nearly 20 years later, I had a chance to sit down and chat with Matthew's parents about the work that's still left and Matthew's lasting legacy. The victim of what many people say was a hate crime in Wyoming this morning has died. 21-year-old Matthew Shepard was found beaten and unconscious last week near the University of Wyoming. A hate crime, according to police, who say the two met Shepard in this Laramie bar, tricked him into believing they were gay too, then the three left together. It was 1 a.m. Wednesday morning, but Shepard, a small man, was allegedly beaten with the butt of a pistol, burned with cigarette butts, and finally tied spread eagle to the fence, left to die. Matthew was the type of person that if this had happened to another person would have been the first on the scene to offer his help, his hope, and his heart to the family. Matt was, he could have been anybody's kid. Here we thought he was the kid next door. He was just a normal kid. Because he was in the theater from the fifth the time he was in the fifth grade working backstage or as an actor. It was, he was so good, so professional. The only yeah. sad thing was he thought he could also sing and dance, but he couldn't. He couldn't, <laughs> yeah. He, he could not. Oh. <laughs> and I kind of felt Matt was gay since he was about eight. And um, so I was, you know, I was expecting it. And when he finally did come out, he came to me over the phone. And he just said, Mom, I, I need to tell you that I'm gay. And my answer was, well, what took you so long to tell me? And there's this quiet at the other end, right? He goes, I don't understand. How did you know before I knew? Judy had promised Matt on the phone that she wouldn't tell me. And as soon as he, she hung up, he told, she told me. <laughs> you know, like I tell people. I figure they all, mothers mothers always, always do always tell. Mothers always lie. Yeah, <laughs> that's, the, that's the thing. He said, Dad, I need to talk to you. It's really important and serious. And so he, he said, Dad, I'm gay. And I said, okay, but it's late. What is it you want to tell me that's so serious? Because I want to get some sleep. And he goes, <sighs> Did you guys ever f fear, not that something would happen, what ended up happening, but just, were you afraid for him when he was out living? Well, Matt was very outspoken and argumentative. I worried more about that than I did about him being gay. We didn't realize we should have been concerned. I hope that in the grief of this moment for Matthew Shepard's family and in the shared outrage across America, Americans will once again search their hearts and do what they can to reduce their own fear and anxiety and anger at people who are different. This afternoon I signed into law the Matthew Shepard and James Byrd Jr. Hate Crimes Prevention Act. Why did you guys feel it was so important to form a foundation and obviously, I mean, 20 years later still keep it going and keep it going strong? When Matt was still alive and in the hospital, people were sending us money and um, we, we just felt like there was a better purpose for that money. And if people could see us accepting parents, we had lost our child to violence, they might welcome their child back because at least they still had their child. We would use this brief amount of time we had because, you know, people move on to try to make a difference for Matt's friends and his peers. There was this feeling we all felt, I think, that we owed this to Matt. When you look back at Matt's life, obviously way shorter than it should have been. Does it, what is it, what emotions? I just feel like what we do is a celebration of his life. I'm very proud of it. He had a lot of accomplishments growing up. I mean, he went through scouts. Judy was a den mother and stuff like that. And, and we, we saw him do all that. We saw him on the stage. We, we saw him with his friends. But what he accomplished in his short life was pretty amazing. I know, of course, that you would trade it all to have Matthew back, but does it at least give you a sense of, at least it was for something? It's, it's really not about Matt anymore, is it? Because today's world is not Matt's world. Um, there's so much more acceptance and opportunity for the gay community than there was at, when Matt was still here. So it's not, the story's not really about Matt anymore. Now the story is about you. 
What are you gonna do to make the world a better place? The one thing I want you to remember is to never give up on you. Be your authentic self all the time because that's really only how you ever find happiness. Don't let people define who you are. You're unique in a unique way and that's perfect. That's perfect for you. Yeah, and I gotta, I gotta say guys, it was a real honor to be able to sit down with two people that are so loving, so caring, still remember Matt. Obviously 20 years has passed, but that, uh, that pain is still there. I think you can tell when you chat with them and how could it not be? I mean, I distinctly and uh, remember when that happened. I was a 14 year old closeted gay teenager uh, when that happened. And it filled me with fear that we lived in a world where that could happen, but also a lot of hope because of the stories that came on afterwards. Ellen DeGeneres speaking at the funeral, that sort of stuff. And it really, it was a real mixed bag of emotions for people and it still is today. Well, what was really interesting to me, I mean, just an, an awful story, but to see the strength of the parents um, is, is really impressive stuff. But I thought it was interesting what she said, uh, the mother said, this isn't the world that Matt was living in. John, is this the world that, as you maneuver through it? Do you believe that to be true? That oh, yeah. There's been great strides since this awful tragedy. It's undeniable the strides that have happened so quickly, too. I mean, change happens so slowly. We see this with all movements. We see this with civil rights. We see this with uh, suffrage. It takes time. And the LGBT movement has been quick, comparatively, especially in the last 20 years or so, legislatively, hearts and minds. It takes time to change things. That's one of the big things, too, that the parents, the reasons why they're still talking, why they still tour, why they still have this foundation, is while there has been a lot of progress, these things still do happen. Matthew's case was uh, shocking, but it was not the most unique. We've seen all sorts of these sorts what of cases. these monsters? That, that they, the thank goodness, they are in prison, both of them in prison. They're serving two uh, life sentences, each of them. Uh, and that's another interesting side of the story that we couldn't even get to, that uh, Matthew's father uh, was the one that spoke out against the death penalty, sure. offering yeah, sure. some sort of mercy, wow. some sort of forgiveness to kind of stop that cycle of violence. But the last thing that I wanted to mention was the reason that they still do this, the reason they still talk, is that they see now that the administration has changed, they don't want us to s retreat backwards. Yeah. Obviously, the Trump There's administration, Vice President Mike Pence, a lot of issues with LGBT issues, uh, to say the least. Yeah. Uh, that's saying it politely. And I think that they want to make sure that we continue to talk about what happened, to continue to shed light, and to try and bring people together because we cannot go backwards in this struggle. Like any movement, we can. We, we see movements, we see going backwards all yeah. the time, but we got to keep on. Because people think the progress has been made and things have Mission been complete. fixed. Right. And especially in a bubble like Chicago, we are a blue state, yep. and Chicago is 100% a blue kind of area. Mm -hmm. And so you just expect a liberal beliefs, but when right. you travel to other parts of the country, and as we just saw with this election, that's not the case. Oh, right. And to your point, Felicia, and great piece, um, by the way. And as a mom, I was completely heartbroken, you know, yeah. hearing it again because now I remember where I was on the mm -hmm. day and now being a mother and sitting here. I applaud their parents for being so courageous and unselfish because it truly is about changing America, changing our view. And now with the political stance versus Americans, it really shows that we have to stand against the adversity that this administration is, is placing on us. And just to join and our voice speaks volumes, so it's important for us to do our part. Bringing light to this, I think, is just a reminder um, that we have to continue to embrace our differences. Um, yeah, and that's important, and not only the LGBT community, but we appreciate all of our allies out there, and that is such, and that makes a real, real difference. So, uh, for more information on the Matthew Shepard Foundation, head to MatthewShepard.org. Okay, Great we're going to go to a quick commercial break. Thank you, guys. Uh, we're going to be back with the jam.